Um, and that's how we started this initiative um, about two years ago, uh, two and a half, three years ago, to build what uh, we call California Institute for Biomedical Research, or Caliber, is uh, a new way to approach uh, drug discovery um, in the not-for-profit setting. And just to tell you, our mission is a little bit arrogant. Um, we actually work on many different diseases. Uh, we worry about degenerative diseases of aging, regenerative medicine, um, autoimmune disease, neglected diseases, um, and, and cancer. And so we have a very broad spectrum of interest, and our hope is to have an impact on a significant number of diseases. Um, uh, over uh, the coming years. And at the same time, uh, what we'd like to do is most of the work at Caliber is done by postdocs, okay? So it also has a training mission to train the next generation of young scientists in translational research, preclinical translational research. So that's really the goal of Caliber, um, and it's to do it in, in kind of a unique setting. Um, What's the motivation um, uh, for Caliber? And the motivation is, is that it, really there are a lot of discoveries being made in the life sciences nowadays. And many of those discoveries are made in academic institutions and basic research institutes. And the, the process of translating those discoveries into new medicines is really become somewhat difficult. Um, it's historically been difficult for um, universities and research institutes to collaborate productively with big pharma just because of all of the legal complexities and differences in culture it makes that forming those collaborations difficult. Um, that's left the universities to try and do drug discovery themselves, so you're seeing a lot of institutions, basic research institutions, trying to set up drug discovery groups. And, and the problem there is they really don't have the knowledge, experience, or even the processes to do drug discovery, which is a lot different than kind of a cottage industry approach to basic research. Pharma is becoming more and more focused on in licensing and uh, worrying about validated drug targets. So they're becoming more risk adverse, um, which also makes it hard to translate a discovery into a new medicine because there's a big um, a leap of faith one has to, to have to think that that discovery is actually going to have clinical benefit. Um, historically, the venture groups have done this, um, but the time horizons for venture investments are shortening. Um, which makes it harder to do kind of longer term, um, higher risk research in a venture setting. So uh, we have to come up with other ways to really facilitate and accelerate uh, the translation of new research into new medicines. Um, there are many models people are worrying about, as I said. Universities are trying to set up their own drug discovery institutes. Um, Scripps has done that in Florida, um, Vanderbilt. Uh, we see Cornell, Rockefeller, um, and Sloan Kettering teaming up to do that and so forth. Uh, they're building something from scratch and usually without the experience of having been there and done that, okay? And in some cases, what they wind up doing is hiring a lot of people from pharma industry and recreating a pharma-like process 